It all started with some stale donuts and coffee in 1980. Sister Maureen and I didn't have a plan. We just saw a need. I was working at St. Michael's Parish in North Hartford, and um, we were receiving many people coming to the door looking for food, food assistance. And it was obvious to us that hunger was a need in the city. We were also downtown one day, and uh, we saw an individual rummaging through a dumpster, obviously looking for food. And that individual ended up coming to our soup kitchen initially, and we got to know him, and his name was Frank. Remember Frank? Yes. And um, so that was another reason that we started. We said we have to do something about this. We thought coffee and donuts for some of these clients might be, a, some of these friends might be a nice little thing to start. Throughout the 80s, we started the day shelter, transitional housing, and the thrift store. We realized that people needed more than a meal. They needed companionship and someone to listen. A lot of my job is that they just need to vent when they have a problem and I can sit and talk to them. Sometimes they break down and cry. Grown men cry, but I think it makes them feel better. Nourishment doesn't stop at food. Maureen Teresa had the fortitude to, to nourish the spirit, to nourish the brain, to nourish the living situation. Nourishment in involves the human psyche, the human being, the person that's on the street. You know, when you, we started feeding people, you get to know them over a meal. You get to talk to them as people, and they get to see you as a person just out there to help or to be a companion. Because many of the clients that we do see don't have family or connections. We are all made of the same stuff, no matter if we are on the street or if we're in the penthouse. We're the same thing. It's just sometimes the cards get dealt a little different. I describe it as a place where people come, not just for food, but to have a lot of their needs met, or for just a quiet, brief escape from whatever else they're dealing with in life. In the 90s, we started looking at the root of the issues in Hartford and how we could help by providing more education and career opportunities. We started HOME, which helps mothers prepare for their GED opened low-income housing in the community, and started FEAST, which trains men and women for jobs in the food service industry. Men and women can learn uh, the basic food handling skills so they can get a job and work in a restaurant. I think it helps my clients here because when they go to the FEAST program, that's one of the things that they can get self-esteem. They pass the test and we help them get jobs. And I think that's great because they become good people in the community. They work for themselves and makes them feel good. If you're living on the streets, your whole lifestyle degrades quickly. If we have more housing, like the O'Neill House, which is very affordable and well-managed, we'd have less people on the streets and maybe more direct services for them. You see little kids when they come into the housing. They're maybe five, six. And now today, you see them going off to college. I mean, here they are living in the inner city, and yet they're really trying to better their situation. They have home, which is helping our mothers in education. We see women come in every day, come to class, trying to overcome many obstacles in their lives. Most have children. They maybe take two buses to get here. When they come in to go to the classroom, the children will stay in the front building, which is like their little daycare area. And that's where Sister Teresa and Sister Maureen's office is. This is a joy for me, to have the children so near our office. Now, this is the main office, and the kids are in and out, you know, running in and out of the office, and uh, it's part, it's how we are. And they That's bring, why she never gets anything done, plays with the kids all day. They bring a lot of joy. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, they lighten the spirit. Do. And you want them to have hope. That's the biggest thing, too, for the children. But then on graduation day, when you see them handed their high school diploma and just being so proud, maybe for some it's the first time in their family anyone has gotten a high school education. So for me, that's, that's pretty important. Since then, we've started the Kids Cafe that brings food to children at the Boys and Girls Club and other programs. We wanted to make sure that those children were going to sleep at night with full stomachs. We also renovated the soup kitchen and recently acquired the Jubilee House, which is another ministry in the south end of Hartford.
Well, the kids' cafe is more than just a meal also. We feed upwards of 400 children every single day after school. Children need to feel healthy and, and feel good so they can study and learn. The meals are a special time at the House of Bread. It's really a, a joyful environment. And the clients, they come there and they're treated with dignity, with respect. And it, it's the environment of a restaurant. They sit down, they're, they're served food, there's conversation. The Soup Kitchen, we serve uh, breakfast and lunch Monday through Friday, and we'll serve an average about 100 to 150 for breakfast, and about 200 to 250 for lunch every day. The food is delicious. I mean, there are very talented chefs who are behind all of the, the meals that are served there. And I would say that 90% of these clients that come into our Soup Kitchen, they come in for breakfast and lunch every day and it's like their family dining room. Like an oasis where they can get help and, and, and be a community and, and feel safe where they are. We have such a great team of employees and volunteers that have made all of this possible. Most of them have been here for over 15 years. We've had long-term employees, which mm -hmm. says to me that they really enjoy working in the environment. We wouldn't be able to exist without the volunteers. I, I mean, they are of prime importance to our ministries. It's like the lifeblood, the spirit of the operation. When you have volunteers that come from the Greater Hartford suburban area, and they come into the inner city with the sense of how can I help, what can I do? And we've had many volunteers who were with us for years. They were in the soup kitchen on Ann Street. As they moved on in years, they went to the thrift store and helped in the thrift store. You know, so they stayed well into their 80s even to uh, to help us. How long am I going to stay? Um, I think that I I can't leave. I mean, I think that if we leave, uh, the nuns come after you and they put a little hex on you. So I think you you stay forever. That's why most of our employees stay for a long time. They're great people, they really are. Um, I love Sister Teresa and Sister Maureen, they're doing a great job and I'm very, very proud to be here. Everybody feels good being around the sisters. They're really remarkable people and in thinking about it, I come back to Matt's pasta sauce, his secret recipe. And I think the sisters have a secret recipe because they just get it done and I'm not sure how they do it. They are two people that I think their chemistry is so good because they are so different. They are like night and day, but each has its advantage. They have different styles, but, but the same goal. I mean, who knew 35 years ago that this donut and coffee thing turned out to be one of the biggest, if not the largest, nonprofit service organization that touches Hartford's poor, homeless, and hungry every single day. It's, it's an amazing story. Never. 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 <laughs> Never. No. And even as I reflect and think about it, so how did it happen? And I don't think we explored or brainstormed or even said, we just did what we had to do day by day, week by week, month by month. And it's a beautiful, it was very challenging at times, very difficult, but there were so many blessings along the way. We always hear about the, the things that are usually negative. There's a lot of goodness out there. The House of Bread attracts goodness. It attracts people from the heart. It attracts people that want to help people. Sometimes the little things that you don't notice are the things that count the most. A smile doesn't cost you anything. Saying good morning doesn't cost you anything. Saying excuse me and thank you, things that you learned when you were a child, they still work when you're grown up. We are so grateful and my heart is filled with joy with the the idea that so many people have responded to the mission of the House of Bread, to the needs of so many different people. And this has gone on from day one. The people who have supported us with time and money, we are ever so grateful for the corporations, for the civic groups, the church groups, and individuals who have been behind the scenes in the House of Bread story. As we move forward to the future, it's, uh, it's hard to say where the future is going, but we want to keep it you know, on the par that has always been a good name organization, keep it going and reaching out to the needs of people. Anything that's going to help the person in their life, whether it's feeding, educating, or housing, anything that's gonna make their life better. We've come so far from coffee and donuts, but there's still so much work to be done. 
Here's to another wonderful and successful 35 years.